We all know that once installed, the clutch must be adjusted properly and at regular intervals to ensure correct operation. This video will talk about the two procedures used to adjust the clutch system. The first is the internal adjustment, which is followed by the linkage adjustment. The clutch internal adjustment is performed any time the clutch is serviced and when the free travel of the clutch pedal is less than a half inch. Let me emphasize that the internal adjustment is always completed before adjusting the linkage. The linkage adjustment might be necessary when any part of the system is serviced. Before starting either of the adjustment procedures, make sure that the entire system is in good condition and operating correctly. To do this, step on the pedal and push it to the end of travel while someone observes the release lever. When the clutch pedal moves, the release lever must also move. Motion must not be lost between the clutch pedal and the release lever. These are the different sequences of the movement of the clutch pedal. From the beginning of the movement through the first approximately one and a half inches is called the free travel. Very little resistance should be felt here. From one and a half inches to the end of the travel, resistance is felt in the movement of the clutch pedal. On clutches used with non-synchronized transmissions, hard resistance must be felt one inch before the end of the pedal travel where the release bearing touches the clutch brake on the input shaft of the transmission. Make sure that the linkage is tight and moves freely during the operation of the vehicle. If the linkage is loose or damaged, the travel distance of the release bearing is affected. When you verify that the system is in good condition and all the components are operating correctly, you're ready to begin the internal adjustment of the clutch. The clutch cover has an inspection hole which is covered during operation. By removing the cover, access is provided to the clutch for adjustment and lubrication. To begin the adjustment procedure, rotate the flywheel so that the lock plate is positioned at the inspection hole. Then, remove the lock plate. For non-synchronized transmissions, the distance between the release bearing and the clutch brake is one half inch. The adjusting ring must be rotated if its distance is not at the specified dimension. During the adjustment, the clutch pedal must be depressed to the bottom of the pedal travel and held. A tool is used to rotate the adjusting ring, which moves the release bearing to the specified dimension. On current model clutches, the bearing will move 27 thousandths of an inch when the adjusting ring is moved one lug. Rockwell is redesigning a closer lug pattern for the adjusting ring. The new bearing movement will be 14 thousandths of an inch. An adjusting ring tool is available from either Kentmore, Owatonna, or Snap-on tools. In place of the tool, a pry bar or a large screwdriver can be used as a lever against the bosses on the adjusting ring. Regardless of the tool used, it's very important that the clutch be adjusted properly and at regular intervals. After installing the lock plate and releasing the clutch pedal, recheck for the half inch gap between the release bearing and the clutch brake. To assist with an accurate check, Rockwell has developed a tool kit with these two items. The first is simply a fork tool with a half inch stock. This will slip around the transmission input shaft, allowing you to measure release bearing to clutch brake gap. The second is for checking the eighth inch gap between the release fork and the pads on the release bearing. It's simply an eighth inch stock with a handle. These tools are available from your Rockwell district manager. Now, there should be a clearance of an eighth inch between the tips of the release fork and the pads on the release bearing assembly. If the eighth inch clearance is not there, but the half inch gap is correct, linkage adjustment is necessary. In fact, both of these tools can and should be used together to assure an accurate measurement of your one half inch and one eighth inch gap. These are the parts of the clutch linkage adjustment. The pedal travel, the pedal height, and the free travel. The pedal travel and height adjustment must be performed before the free travel adjustment. There are two kinds of linkage systems, mechanical and hydraulic. There are two types of mechanical systems, cable and rod. In the rod type systems, two or more rods are used to transform the motion of the clutch pedal to the release lever. The complete distance that the clutch pedal moves is called the total travel and is usually adjusted with bumper bolts inside the cab or with stop bolts and pads on the linkage. The pedal height is the distance the pedal is from the floor when the clutch is released. 
it is adjusted by jam nuts on a control rod, bumper bolts, or stop bolts and pads. See the recommended procedure of the vehicle manufacturer. Free travel is the distance the pedal is depressed until the release bearing starts to move. It can vary from one and an eighth inch to two and three quarters inches, depending on the OE. Refer to your original equipment manufacturer's manual. If it's more, the clutch may not release. The clutch disc could then touch the flywheel. If less than half inch, the clutch will slip. In either case, premature wear, excessive heat, and early replacement of the disc will be the result. For non-synchronized transmissions with clutch brakes, adjust the external linkage so that the release bearing assembly touches the clutch brake on the input shaft when the clutch pedal is approximately one half inch to one inch from the floor. For proper disengagement, the release bearing should move at least one half inch when the clutch is fully depressed. The linkage is adjusted to the free travel specification where it's connected to the release lever and to the clutch pedal. On rod type linkage, every rod is adjusted. This is accomplished with jam nuts, threaded rods, or with stop bolts. The manufacturer of the vehicle will have a recommended procedure. Proper clutch adjustment at regular intervals is the key to assuring that the Rockwell clutch will provide the performance you need and expect. Let's review. For non-synchronized transmissions, check for the one half inch gap between the release bearing and the clutch brake. The linkage is adjusted properly if the clearance between the tips of the release fork and the pads on the release bearing is one eighth of an inch. The release bearing must move at least one half inch when the pedal is fully depressed. For free travel measurements, be sure to refer to your OEM manual. We have developed and released a quick reference guide on adjustments. It's TP9392. Feel free to call your Rockwell District Manager at 1-800-535-5560 and ask for a copy. Proper installation followed by proper adjustment at the regular intervals will allow the Rockwell two-plate clutch to operate to the full reach of its design. And that means more dependable load-carrying capability and a longer-lasting drivetrain for independent and fleet haulers.